Well, hello, hello. My name is Gan. Welcome back to Crystalline. Sorry, I haven't been uploading in a bit. Um, just had to deal with some stuff. So, let's get back into it. The trek out of the temple is a lot faster and easier than the trek in. Mostly because there are no more obstacles to stop us. We pop out of the hidden wall in which we entered. Just as before, the main ceremonial hall is empty. We wave goodbye to a couple of monks sweeping the entryway, then begin the walk back to the village. And let's see, this last level we can do. Let's see this. Let's have some Kara who the Vestians were. I fall a step with I fall in step of Kara. So, who exactly were the Vespians? They were the original tribe of Ember Mist and the initial keepers of the Fire Temple. Mm-hmm. Did they build the temple? Kara Strugs? It depends on who you ask. Some experts believe they did. Others think the temple was already there by the time the Vestians came about. Dude, that's crazy. Imagine, um, you find you're, like, back then settlers, right? Like, not cavemen, but, like, you're trying to, like, go go to another place. Like, this will be our home. And you find a ruins and it's like, yes. This is where we shall live. <laughs> Imagine. That shit would be crazy. Interesting. Now I'm curious. How did they get in uh, how did you get into treasure hunting? She pauses, and just a little too long before flashing me her usual cheerful grin. I just sort of fell into it, honestly. Treasure hunting naturally fit into my nomadic lifestyle. Hmm. Where do you learn all the history to even identify relics? You'd be surprised how much you pick up along the way. Especially after you realize what a lucrative business this can be. So you read it from a book. Like, no lie, like, if you're, like, a business person, you're like, mm, I'm gonna go read a book. So, you're just in it for the money? I didn't say that. I'll admit that at first I was just in it for the money. But the more I learned about the ancient people of Asaria, the more invested I became in the history of each relic I found. Mm. I started to find myself daydreaming about who might have used the items I found. What kind of person were they? Did they cherish this item or was it just another piece of their ever-growing collection of stuff? I'm not gonna lie, um, I'm kinda like her. When I look at videos about like history, like today, oh, what was I listening to? To Sparta, you know, back then? Oh man, and I was just thinking to myself, imagine living back then in those times. And like being like a kid growing up in Sparta, and I just get immersed. I, I, I get what you're saying, you know. That's a cool way. That's a cool way of thinking. You're more that meets the eye. <laughs> that seems like a foolish way of thinking. No, that's a cool way of thinking. You know, it's kind of interesting to me. I never thought about it like that before. Maybe if I had, I would have paid more attention in history class. Kara looks at me strangely. Are you a treasure hunter too? No. But you sought out experts dedicated to history? Um, something like that. It was less me seeking it out and more of, more of a requirement I had to fulfill. Kara looks skeptical, but doesn't pry. Okay, let's ask Amelia about... What's your theory about the mysterious woman? <laughs> I approach Amelia. So, that theory you mentioned in the temple about the woman? What was it? Amelia glances at me. Given the location and circumstances previously described by Odorism, my estimation is that the unknown woman you encountered was a projected image of the fire elemental. Of course, as I could not observe her myself, I cannot be certain. Hmm. Do you think that's why she wouldn't talk back? Also, why wouldn't she just show up in person? The amount of energy needed to sustain just an appearance of the elemental would have drained the temple completely. There would have been no energy left for her to give to you. Is that why she disappeared right after? The depletion of energy in the temple would have meant she'd no longer be sustained in this world. Oh. Amelia looks thoughtful. Although, 
It is quite unusual that she would have you absorb the energy to begin with. Why, you little jelly that she didn't appear herself to you and give it to you? Nah, I'm just kidding. I kinda like Amelia, she's like a, like a little sister, you know? Like, give her a pat on the head. You're, you're a smart cookie, aren't you? Oh, what adorable. Here, here's a cookie. Here's a sticker. Good job. He's <laughs> just like, just pat her head like a child. I see. I had a feeling that was her. No wonder she was so hot. She actually existed. She actually exists. Um. You know what? Yeah, that was her. Not, not gonna lie. You saw the fire and everything and they're talking about elementals. I'm like, yeah, that's the fire elemental. It, it's obvious. Come on. I had a sneaky suspicion that was her. I mean, who else could it have been? Amelia nods. Well, it could have been just a crazy lady with. <laughs> I'm just curious. I'm just kidding. It pleases me that you two have reached the same conclusion. Yeah, because I'm smart. I'm brilliant. I'm a genius. I, I'm a voice of a generation. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, thanks? Like, I'm not retarded. <laughs> She looks thoughtful. Still, it is quite perplexing that she would only reveal herself to you. It's not just me. The Pongo saw her too, I think. He didn't really make it clear if he was seeing her or just the fox thing. The Guardian. Uh... The fox would be the guardian of the Fire Temple. Each temple has its own guardian who protects it. That's kind of cool, right? Oh! So, how come the Guardian didn't attack us for breaking into the temple? We did not break in. The Guardian enforces the trial in the temple. Only those who are able to complete the trials are welcome into the temple. Hmm. In that case, that magical fire we had to put our stuff in, where I almost sacrificed the Pongo. Amelia nods, still deep in thought. Are you st Yeah. Are you still trying- Eh, I can't read. Are you still trying to figure out why no one else could see the elemental? She nods again. Any theories? As of now, I do not have one. But perhaps after some further research... Her voice trails off, and she falls back into deep thought. Zack- no. Kara, Zack, and Amelia leads the way back to Ember Mist, while I lag behind. The pongo sits on my head. Liana notices my absence and falls into step with me. She pats the pongo who ignores her, still too focused on the energy around me. Liana pouts, then shakes away the pongo's disregardment of her and refocuses her attention on me. Something on your mind? I drop my voice low so the others can't hear me. Now I've collected the energy from the temple. That means I can try to create a temporal rift and go back home, right? Kara stops, then whirls around to face us. Zack and Amelia stops with her, stop with her. Pardon me, you were speaking very softly and it was a little hard to hear, but it sounded like you just said you need to open a temporal rift to go back home? E Damn it, found out. But that can't be right, can it? Jeez, this woman ha got some supersonic hearing. I glance at Liana, who looks alarmed. Um, about the... Am I really gonna tell him? <laughs> okay, um, about the... Kara smiles flatter at my hesitation, but Amelia looks excited. I knew it! My hypothesis is correct! <laughs> I'm sorry, just like, look at her. <laughs> like, I knew it! I fucking knew it! I knew it! You know what I mean? <laughs> hypothesis? What hypothesis? <laughs> My hypothesis that he is from a parallel world. Liana's eyes grow wide and she forces a panicked smile. I think all this parallel world and temporal rift talk has been getting to you. I mean, Elder Isom said it's impossible. He has already admitted it. What? Liana and I have been careful not to say anything. 
When? The day of our acquaintance. Okay. I rack my brain, but don't remember bringing that up around Amelia. You sought out Professor Xavier's guidance, and after he imparted his advice, you and Leanna had a brief discussion in which you mentioned that what he had suggested was exactly what happened to you. What are you eavesdropping? Okay. Thus began my hypothesis that you arrived from a parallel world. Leanna looks at me, unsure how to react. What's with all these eavesdroppers? The fuck? Continue to deny it? Come clean. Let's see. I'm gonna come clean. Why not? Like, if I deny it, it's just gonna be harder. And I'm thinking back to my Thinner Enigma series. I'm pretty sure when I'm, one of the ladies found out that this other lady was from another world, I, I completely denied it. I'm like, nope, didn't happen. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Did I deny it? No, he didn't say nothing. Okay, I'm gonna come clean. I guess there's no point in denying it now. If our game of cheat is any indication, Amelia can see right through a lie. You're right. I'm not from Terra. Not from Terra, huh? Zack looks me up and down and nods to himself. That's a lot better than the alternative. What's the... Eh, what's the alternative? That you might be... unique. I, is he calling me... Are you calling me... Zack! He's calling me a hoto, isn't he? He's calling me gay. He shrugs. He didn't even know what a discharger was. At least if he's from another world, that explains why he didn't know these things. I don't know about you, sir. Maybe I live in a village where it's a discharger-free zone. We don't have swords, we don't have violence, and we're just covering our eyes all the time and go la di la di la 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 <laughs> Kara looks skeptical. How did he get here? There have been unexplainably high concentrations of energy popping up throughout Isaria, and he happened to show up at one of those areas. We went to the Mage Academy to get some answers, and that's how we came up with the possibility that the high energy readings were temporal rifts, and somehow he had traveled through one. Why or how those rifts were even opened, we still don't know. But if they're the only way for me to get back home, then I have to try to open one. Kara shrugs. Let's just make sure you attempt to open one far away from where I'm standing. That might be tricky considering no one knows how to open one. We may need to talk to Elder Issam. That won't be necessary. I know how to do so already. How the fuck? I have all the answers you will ever need. I don't know what the fuck. We all stare at her. How do you know that? The directions are located in Elder Issam's old research notes, which I had gathered from the Academy. The spell itself is a simple conjuration, which even an amateur could do. An amateur can open a temporal rift? Then why isn't everyone doing it? The impossibility of the spell comes from the fact that the human body cannot manipulate the amount of energy needed for it. Okay, if one person can do it, but what about if we get like 20 people who are like art archmages type, you know what I mean? Like the best of the best. You think they can do it? It's a thought. Nah, I'm just being stupid right now. <laughs> what the fuck? She pauses, then points to me. He may be an exception. I squirm slightly at the eh. I squirm slightly at their gazes fall on me. As their gazes fall on me. Given that you have absorbed energy directly from the temple which should also be an impossibility. I must assume that there is something within you which can possess the high amount of magic without suffering consequences. Perhaps it is a skill which you acquired from your world. I don't know about you, but in my world, I just, this guy was in college. Like, I'm just a college boy that eats ramen and shit. My world doesn't have magic. Amelia blinks. Regardless, only a short amount of time has passed. 
There was plenty of time for you to still internally combust. Are you saying that I could die? A wave of an ease makes my stomach queasy. Maybe I should open up this rift now before that has a chance to happen. Amelia grins with excitement. I concur with that suggestion. <sighs> that may be the best now that you have the magic. Zack shrugs and Kara takes a look at, an, at our open surroundings. Maybe we should first look for a spot with a bit more cover. We don't want to be opening up rifts on an open pathway. <laughs> Imagine we just open a rift and I- oh, Alright guys, bye! Then I fucking get hit, get hit by a truck and get isekai back to this world. <laughs> Good point. There was some tree cover towards the west. I'm sorry, I'm just thinking like, imagine my dude, he opens a, another rift, right? But since he's not at the same location he was last time, he just opens up in another place in the world. <laughs> he opens up and he's like, what am I doing in North Korea? <laughs> and you just hear a uh, Korean so just like, you know what, I don't know, I don't, I don't know Korean. I'm not gonna be like, ching chong ching ching ching, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's an American, get to him! <laughs> We mumble our affirmation and follow Zack towards the trees. We settle in the grove of trees. Both Liana and Amelia stand on either side of me. Zack selects a tree far away to not be affected by any strained magic, but close enough to get a good view on what's going on. Kara, on the other hand, hangs back towards the outskirts of the trees. Zack looks back at her and amused smile on his lips. You'll miss the show from back there. You sure you don't want to come any closer? Kara's voice is distant. Yep. <sighs> There's a bit of movement as she takes another step back behind the tree. Uh, is she okay? Are you sure you're okay back there? Yeah, don't mind me, I'm just... Keep and watch. Oh, since she's farmed, it's gonna be like, oh, making sure no one accidentally stumbles upon us. Something like that. <laughs> Amelia, Amelia studies the notes, then nods to herself and snaps back, snaps the book shut. The casting is quite simple. It is the same technique as any other cast. Liana looks at me. Are you ready? I nod. Amelia glances at my stance, then frowns. Your stance is incorrect. Straighten your spine. I lengthen my spine and stand as straight as I can. Now you are too tense. Keep yourself relaxed, but do not slump. Okay. Um, okay. I release some of the tension in my back. She's about to speak again, but Liana gently pulls Amelia to the side. Okay, I think he gets it. She steps in front of me and gives me an encouraging smile. Your stance is fine. Just remember to raise your arms in front of you. As I do as she says, and she nods. Now the actual casting part is gonna sound tricky. You'll need to focus your mind on the spell you want to cast. So, I should just think about temporal rifts. Yes, but you need to connect that thought with the magical energy. Um, okay. Uh... Clear your mind of every thought. Clear your mind of every thought. There is nothing but the force. <laughs> just imagine. I close my eyes and push away all my- all of my doubts and confusion and focus on Liana's voice. Now. Think about the rift that you wish to create. I imagine tearing a hole in the fabric of reality. I don't actually know what a rift would look like or feel like. All I remember is the bright light. Should I focus on that light? At the same time, sense for the magic within you. I try to sense for any kind of magic, but nothing feels out of the ordinary. How do I know where the magic is? It'll feel like a tendril or willing warmth. When you find it, reach out for it and grab hold. The magic is eager to be used and will latch on. 
Okay. I wish women were more like magic. This is stupid. Why am I even doing this? Ugh. Now I'm gonna put the first one. This is so abstract. Abs abstract. But I know I can do it. I just have to focus. I turn within and regulate my breathing. This sounds very similar to meditation, so perhaps using the same technique will yield success. As my breathing becomes slow and steady, I open up my senses for any indication of other presence. Once you find the magic, connect your thoughts of the rift with the magic, and then channel both the magic and the thoughts through your hands to cast it in the open. I continue sis- eh. I continue sensing, hoping to find even a hint of warmth. But how do I know if it's just my own warmth or the magic? Sweat beads on my temple as I strain to cast, but nothing happens. Eventually, my arms grow weary and my mind is exhausted. I decompress with a sigh. It didn't work. Damn. It's okay, we can try again. People aren't usually able to cast on their first try. I mentally groan. The idea of doing all that again does not throw me. There must, there must still be something I'm missing. It just takes some getting used to. Plus, you're trying to cast without a manipulator. Oh yeah, both you and, Am and Amelia use manipulators to cast. Maybe that's why I was, I wasn't able to do it. Well. The manipulator's function is to house the energy source for us to cast with. Technically, because you already have the energy within you, you shouldn't need a manipulator. Oh. But this is all theory anyway. It may be easier trying to cast using a crystal, especially for a first-time caster. Regardless, there could be a multitude of factors for why this attempt was not successful. One for which could be as simple as the fact that you still do not possess enough energy to open the rift. Shouldn't the temple have enough energy? Eh. Shouldn't the temple had enough? Damn it, I... <laughs> eh, sorry. Shouldn't the temple have had enough? Theoretically, perhaps. But a significant portion of the energy was already being used to sustain the elemental's image. She was able to transfer what was left of the energy to you. Which, from my readings, was only 20% of the total energy in the temple when we started. Oh. Suddenly, Kara is standing right between us, as cheerful as ever. That sounds like you all still need to explore some more temples! <laughs> oh my god! Shopping! <laughs> Sorry. How she just said that just reminded me of a girl like, Oh my god! Shopping! <laughs> Sorry. I jump at her presence. Even Liana and Amelia seem surprised to see her so close. Only Zack is unaffected. How did he get here so fast? She grins at me. Am I wrong? The Pongo jumps out of Ki out of Kara's arms and hops into mine. Boy, boy. I pat him on the head and he wiggles contently, licking the air around me. So it could be that he doesn't know how to cast. Or that he doesn't have enough energy. Well, first of all, guys, I live in a world of magic, so he's off. Damn. Sure, but what does that mean for you all in terms of next steps? Are you going to hang out in Ember Mist until he learns how to cast? It could take him weeks before he can even cast the simplest of spells. That is quite a long time to rely on someone else's hospitality. It sounds like it would still be in your best interest to visit at least one more temple just to be sure you have enough energy. You can teach him how to cast on the way, so by the time he gets there, he'll be ready to go. Cool. Liana looks thoughtful. That does seem like the better option than the alternative. Hmm, yes. I'm putting my fingers to my mouth exactly how she has it, like, mm-hmm, yes. If it's the fastest way to get me back home, then, I'm not opposed to having all, all of our bases covered. Amelia nods. I'm not gonna lie. Would you want to go home? Like, I don't know about his family. Well, if you have a loving family and stuff, 
then yeah go home but like let's just say you have nothing like at best you might have like a few friends and nothing else would you want to go back home or would you want to stay with magic this one tears me up um apart sometimes because like we have technology like what we have here and it's like do i want to give that up for magic because don't get me wrong magic is cool like if i could learn to cast i, I would fucking love it but do you want to leave the i fuck i hit my desk would you want to leave your world just to like go on adventure and have magic i don't know comment down below what, what do you think amelia nods that is the most efficient course of action if we can mitigate any uncertain factors then we can pinpoint where the weakness is and adjust accordingly for a successful cast the research this will provide will be very informative hearing amelia's affirmative affirmation eh. Affirmation? Affirmination. Affirmative. Zach shrugs. Since I'm here to protect Amelia, I go where she goes. Kara smiles broadly and slings her arms around Zach and Amelia, much to their dismay. Great. Then our arrangement is still on. Hi. Hey! <laughs> Zach moves out of Kara's grasp. She smirks. Most men would be thrilled to have a pretty woman hug them. Right, Amelia? That is correct. <laughs> a healthy physique is inherently attractive for potential mates. You wanna know something? Like, I thought um, Amelia was gonna be like... You know what I mean? Like, in her attitude, like... Don't touch me. Like... Stop hugging me. You know, you know what I mean? Like, something like that. Kara lets go and starts to lead the way out of the forest. We should spend the night in Ember Mist. We can plan our next steps there. I. Once we are in agreement, we follow Kara back to Ember Mist. Upon arriving, we head to the inn. We can spend the night here. I'll meet you back down in the lobby in a few minutes. All right. She ventures upstairs while we secure two rooms with the innkeeper. As we receive our keys, Amelia excuses herself. I wish to seek an audience with Elder Ism and continue our discussion. I would be remiss to let such an opportunity pass. You know what? You do, girl. I'm not gonna lie. Go meet your idol. He seems like a good guy, but maybe we should keep the fact that I'm not from, from here a secret. Yes. That is something in which we are in agreement. Alright, cool. Oh, okay. She nods and leaves the inn. The decor of the inn is very similar to Elder Isam's hut. Pillows and rugs line the ground as a few people sit cross-legged in front of the fire. A few tables line the other side of the hot lobby, all of which are empty. In fact, aside from the couple of people chatting by the fire, this place is very empty. Once I sit down, I feel a fatigue pass over me, but I try to shake it off. I guess they don't see too many visitors here. For a city that's supposed to be so secret, that's not surprising. It's more surprising that they have an inn. I nod and sniffle a yawn. Hmm. We sit at a table as Zack orders us dinner. After a few minutes, Kara returns. Where's Amelia? She went to speak with Elder Isam. She nods. My eyelids droop and I sniffling yawn every few minutes. My limbs feel like le le leaded weights. Leaded? Leaded? Leaded weights. And it's taking all of my effort to sit up right. After I let out a wide yawn, Liana glances over at me. Maybe you should go to bed. We're winding down anyway, so it'd be a good idea to get some rest. I nod blearly. <sighs> that sounds good right now. I guess absorbing all of that energy really takes it out of you, huh? Liana smiles at my joke. It would seem so. 
Regardless, I'm grateful for the excuse to leave. I trot upstairs and fumble with the keys before opening the door. Then, I fall onto one of the twin cots and pass out as soon as my head hits the pillow. Light filters through the window a gentle and gently pushes me out of my slumber. And that's where I'm going to stop it right there. <laughs> I know, I know. I should, I should probably make, like, record more because, you know, I haven't recorded, like, in three or four days, I want to say. But, I don't know, I think this is a good spot to leave it off. We try to do something, we failed, we go back to the inn, and it's a brand new day. What do you want me to say? I'm bad. I suck at um timing shit. So, you know, I mean, this is like the best I can do. Well, anyway, if you like the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification, and leave a comment about anything. Seriously, I will answer any question or try to. If you say you want to be my friend, I'm probably not going to answer it. Like, sorry, there's this guy who put, I want to be your friend. And it's like, what do I comment with that? It's like, that's kind of awkward. If you're going to comment, please. I would like to, um, I don't know, chat up for a bit. Like, maybe you'd be like, oh, I like the video. And I'm like, hey, you're like, thank you. And we just chat from there. <laughs> All right, then. Well, fail. Farewell? Fuck, what was my outro? I know it's bye-bye, but what is my outro? It's farewell, and as always, bye-bye.